So Onyx, yeah, I uh, think I got a little bit overconfident with this one. I went into it kind of thinking, hey, Onyx learns Dig, Earthquake, Rock Slide. I've learned a lot since I played it first. This one's not gonna be that bad, right? Well, yeah, uh, this video has taken me way too long to produce, so. Ah, uh, it's like every time I think like, oh, single stage Pokemon gonna be nice and fast. Never mind. The sixth video I ever released was a solo Onyx challenge in Pokemon Red, and I started it with the line, so you know what Pokemon's bad? Onyx is bad. And honestly, I stand by this statement. However, now that I'm working towards a complete challenge dex in Pokemon Yellow, I'm gonna need to play another playthrough with Onyx. So today is the day. Will a year and a half of experience make Onyx an easier challenge for me, or will Pokemon Yellow prove to be harder than Red and Blue? Can I beat the game at a lower level than my previous finish of 79, or will Butt have something to say about that? I think that I might have a bit of wishful thinking here, but I really do believe that I can get better results. So let's see how it goes. The reason I say Onyx is bad is not because of its design. Honestly, this thing looks really cool. I love it. It's bad because of its base stat distribution. While 160 defense is great, it honestly takes away from Onyx's ability to do anything other than resist normal type attacks. It only has 45 attack and 30 special, so it's really not going to hit hard. Making its defense stat make even less sense is the fact that Onyx only has 35 base HP. So it has a ton of defense, but very few hit points. Just wonderful. The saving grace is its speed stat, so at least it's going to move first against most foes. Against the rival in the lab, I get to try out Onyx's starting moveset of Tackle and Screech. With the latter, I can cut my opponent's defense in half in one turn, allowing Onyx's Tackle to deal double damage. Even with it, Onyx is only dealing one-third damage to Eevee. I get a critical hit the next turn negating my Screech, so this battle ends up taking four turns instead. At least my rock typing makes Onyx nearly invincible in the early game. Almost all the Pokemon here have physical moves and they're mostly just normal types. The first trainer that I'm really going to have to start thinking about is Brock. But there's some time before that, so we should discuss the moves that Onyx can learn in this generation. It's a relatively small pool, but there are a lot of great options. Harden, Body Slam, Earthquake, Dig, Mimic, Rest, and Rock Slide. I am so glad that this rock type actually learns Rock Slide. Uh, I'm still really upset about the fact that the fossils don't. Uh, and also Aerodactyl. I feel so bad for Aerodactyl. In Viridian City, I stop by the Mart and stock up on items for the playthrough. Buying a Pokeball here allows me to catch a Pidgey in Viridian Forest as I'm journeying to Pewter City. Having Screech as a part of my moveset is a huge advantage here. It allows me to get past the bug catchers faster than I would if Onyx only had Tackle. After that, I face the junior trainer in Brock's gym for experience. Onyx has the medium fast leveling rate in the early game, and this is the second slowest experience group at this level. After the fight, I am only level 10. However, this is one of my Pokemon challenges, and I do want to see how fast this snake can go. So I save, and I face Brock right away. Geodude's first. Against it, I set up Screech three times to ensure that Onyx is dealing the maximum amount of damage. I use Tackle, I get a critical hit, and it looks like it does like two damage to Geodude. Mm, great. Onyx's speed is working against me right now. On the next turn, I do more damage, but I shouldn't get used to it, because Onyx scores three more critical hits, making the Geodude take a total of seven turns to knock out. Onyx levels up, and this boosts its speed to 24. Uh, this is very key, keep that in your mind. Now it's time for the showdown we've all been waiting for. My Rock Hard Snake against the Rock Solid Pokemon Trainer's Rock Solid Snake. I might have half the number of moves, and I also might have a finite PP while he has an infinite PP, but it's how you use these things that really matters. Brock doesn't have good AI, so he just selects his moves randomly. Now I'll get back to the fact that I mentioned that my Onyx has 24 speed. Well, Brock's Onyx has 23 speed, so at 24 I'm going to move first every turn, and now I can completely neutralize Bide. After setting up Screech three times, I'm still not doing very much damage, but it is more than one. The fight takes time, and we both bring each other into the red. I'm at four hit points, his onyx goes for bind, misses, my tackle doesn't do quite enough, he uses tackle, I survive with two hit points, and I finish the fight. So I outlasted him. A 7 minute and 7 second Brock split is way faster than I thought would be possible for onyx. Things are looking up for this playthrough. 
Between Pewter City and Cerulean, there aren't very many choices for me to make. I could fight optional trainers, but there are a lot of those on Nugget Bridge, and all of them are at higher levels, meaning they provide better experience yields. I do choose to fight the optional lass by going above the bug catcher. This allows me to defeat her, walk back to Pewter City, reset her position, and move on without fighting the four bug Pokemon on the other trainer's team. A Kakuna and Metapod are just really not going to be fun to defeat with Onix, or time efficient. In Mount Moon, I decide to skip all the optional trainers to save time. Against the Super Nerd, Onyx learns Bind. This move is half decent because Onyx's base speed and how it's designed in Generation 1. If I move first and don't miss, I trap the opponent, preventing them from moving. There's the potential to chain this until the PP runs out. However, after grabbing the Dome Fossil, we can see that this isn't really the perfect strategy, because 85% accuracy is honestly like having 50% accuracy. Jesse and James actually managed to take Onyx all the way down to 14 hit points before I finally finish the coughing off with Bind. In Cerulean City, I grab the rare candy, make a trip to the Mart to buy repels and potions, and then I heal. Technically, there's a choice here if I want to face Misty or the rival, but Onyx doesn't stand a chance against her water types. Her Starmie has 56 speed, so I'll need 57 in order to move first. Plus, once I finish Nugget Bridge, Onyx will get access to Dig, a 100 base power move in Generation 1. With the same type attack bonus, it's going to be 150 effective power, and Misty is going to be much easier with that on my side. However, the rival ends up being incredibly frustrating because of sand attack. Onyx's defense is helpful here, although it sort of feels like a strange insult. It just drags the fight on endlessly, and my defenses actually get lowered enough that Eevee is doing more than one damage with tackle. Ugh. Finally, I get the critical hit that I need and I end the fight. On Nugget Bridge, Onyx learns Rock Throw, its first stab move. While this is nice for knocking out uh, bird Pokemon, I want to avoid using this at all costs because it has 65% accuracy. So uh, there's the rule, of course, uh, it's like Pokemon Gospel. If it's not 100% accurate, it's 50% accurate, and if it's Dynamic Punch, it's 5% accurate. And I think we need a small amendment. So uh, if it's Dynamic Punch or Rock Throw in Generation 1, it's 5% accurate. Next is the trainer who has Mankey, and it knows Low Kick. I prepare by healing and saving. First turn, I use Screech to maximize my damage. Mankey Low Kicks and does one third damage. Next, I use Bind to hopefully trap the Pig Monkey endlessly, but I miss. Mankey scratches, and then I decide to use Tackle instead. It does almost half, and then my Rock Hard Snake gets kicked again and again. So that's my first reset. On my next attempt, I change my strategy. I use two screeches and then tackle twice. Lucky for me, Mankey doesn't kick even once this time. Next, there are two hikers, one with a Machop and a Geodude, and the other one with an Onix. In Generation 1, if the trainer has less Pokemon, they'll be at higher levels, so facing the Onix doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. Plus, I want the elixir that the other trainer is guarding. Because Rock Type doesn't resist Rock moves, this is a good time to use Rock Throw. It does surprisingly good damage to Geodude, so this fight goes much faster than I expected. Now, if you saw my Fossils video, you'll know that the Oddish Lass at the end of Nugget Bridge is particularly difficult for Pokemon who take 4 times damage from Grass Type moves. Onyx is one of these Pokemon. So, yeah, this is gonna get brutal. The fact that I likely won't hit the Oddishes complicates the matter. However, Bind, with luck, can allow me to win. So, how many resets is uh, she gonna force Onyx into? Uh, one? Two? Three? Four? Okay, so this was starting to get bad, but on the fifth fight, Bind comes through and I end up defeating her. With how difficult that fight was, I'm not very confident going into Misty. She's probably gonna be impossible. Plus, I still haven't reached the 57 speed I need to move first against the Starmie. So, I'll head to Vermilion City first. After all, this path leads past two incredible TMs, the first of which is Dig. Unfortunately, it doesn't solve the problem that's in Onyx's way on the very next route. This junior trainer has three Pidgeys, uh, all of which know Sand Attack. While Onyx does move first, it has to use Rock Throw to one-hit her Pokemon. A single Sand Attack would obviously make Rock Throw uh, effectively a guaranteed miss, and her second bird gets one. Please, this Rock type really should not lose to these low-level birds. And then, a miracle happens. Rock Throw hits, and I actually take the victory. On the SSN, I grab the TM for rest. I pick this up every single time I do an initial playthrough. I don't want to get stuck later on without it. After that, I grab Body Slam, and this is a nice replacement for Bind. 100% accuracy feels so good. With it, I sweep the rival's team and then dig back to Cerulean. 
I'm level 24 now and Onyx's speed is only 49, so I need to level up more first to be able to defeat Misty. Luckily I have two rare candies, but the junior trainer in front of Misty doesn't level me up to 25, so I face the additional swimmer hoping to get my level up. And I don't. So I head out north to Nugget Bridge and face an optional trainer here. His claim to fame is that he can be used to trigger the Mew glitch. I do level up, but I only have 51 speed now. I'm gaining 2 per level, so if I use 2 rare candies I'll have 55, and that just won't cut it, and I really don't want to use all 3 that I have access to at this moment. I fight more trainers on Nugget Bridge, level up to 26, and then make my way back to the gym. After both the rare candies, Onyx finally has exactly 57 speed at level 28. Can I defeat Misty? Let's find out. She opens with Staryu. I use Dig, and it's... a one-shot. Okay, good. Starmie's next. I outspeed as planned, Dig connects, but the Starfish survives with orange health, uses Water Gun, and uh, knocks Onyx out in a single hit. Uh, oh dear, this is very bad. She has good AI, so she's never going to select a move that isn't Water Gun or Bubble Beam with Starmie. She can still use X Defense, which would allow me to hit the Starmie one more time, but I can also use Body Slam first turn against it in the hopes of getting Paralysis or the X Defend. Uh, this doesn't work the first time I try it, or the second time, but on the third time she uses X Defend, giving Onyx the chance to dig. Okay, please, 150 effective power has to be enough. Or Starmie takes almost no damage and knocks Onyx out with Water Gun. I tried again, no luck, and again, still no luck, and again. <laughs> this is starting to feel really hopeless. <laughs> okay, one more time. Onyx uses Body Slam, gets a crit, takes Starmie into orange health, and then paralyzes it. Yes! Misty uses X Defend, and with that, Onyx has his chance. I use Dig and knock Starmie out. So, that was probably the least consistent fight ever. Pure luck with a crit. And yeah, that's what I needed. Anyways, I'm gonna take it. I'm moving on. Surge is next. And this is a nice reprieve from the punishment of Misty. He's a complete cakewalk. Onyx is moving on to the next section of the game with a time of 31 minutes and 20 seconds. Between Cerulean and the cave is the wrapping lass. I'm really not sure what I was thinking against her. I just keep using body slam. Dig would have been neutrally effective here. That allows the Oddish to paralyze Onyx, and this is the inspo she needs to start her wrapping. Is this going to turn into one of those truly painful fights where she just does one damage over and over until Onyx faints? Uh, well, not so far. I managed to take the first bell spread out, but I haven't learned my lesson. Just please use Dig! I fail to, and that lets Oddish take Onyx into orange health before it faints. The wrapping still might get me. Bellsprout starts to chain it, however, Onyx breaks through, moves, and finishes her off. I think that I deserve the loss for that fight though. Rock Tunnel is a complete breeze. I have Dig for the Hiker after all. I'm arriving at Celadon now, and it's time to celebrate, because finally I can get rid of Rock Throw and teach Onyx Rock Slide. After that, I head to Pokemon Tower, and I face the rival here. He's very simple. With Dig and Onyx's speed, I could face the Chandler in here for experience. Their Ghastly give 100 special stat experience and 80 speed stat experience. In the past, I've said that they give 100 speed stat experience. Uh, I was wrong. I was just getting Ghastly's special confused with its speed. Like, they're ordered differently in the new generations. Special is always above speed, but in the original generation, they're swapped. Anyways. All of this experience would be good for Onyx, but I'm optimistic that I can make it through the challenges ahead without it. Misty, you didn't destroy my morale. I head to the Safari Zone next, grab some vitamins, grab some teeth, ah, not sure why I want to pick these up, and then I get Surf. Erica seems like she'll be a little bit more trouble than she's worth now, so I decide to head to Sylph first. I face the rocket blocking the Carbos Rare Candy and Earthquake. I'll keep Dig on my moveset right now so that I can use it to escape buildings like this. After Blaine or Sabrina, I can teach Earthquake without any downsides. I fight the trainer blocking the card key, and I don't level up here, so I face a few more trainers and then heal before saving in front of rival Fievel. He opens with Sandslash. I use Dig, it does one third. Sandslash wastes time with Poison Sting, giving me time to use Screech, which unfortunately doesn't boost my damage very much. My third Dig finally takes it out, and Cloister's next. Rockslide needs to get the job done here. It does less than half, Cloister uses Aurora Beam, and Onyx faints. So that move does two times damage. I don't even want to think about what Clamp would do. So I guess I need to go somewhere else. Next I could try Erica, but that doesn't seem like a good option because she has four times damage. Koga is also an option, but he has powerful special attacks in the form of Psychic. So my experience playing Pokemon Yellow so much over the last year and a half tells me that both of these approaches will only lead to more resets and wasted time. 
Onyx is probably going to need additional levels to defeat Koga and Erika, and it's going to need a lot of levels to defeat Lorelei. So training now and saving rare candies isn't the worst idea. At level 40, I decide to face the rival again. Overleveling is also going to be a waste of time. Before the battle, I buy Onyx some extra vitamins with the money that I earned during the training. I want to make sure that it's as powerful as possible for the next fights. Okay, so back to the rival. Sandslash still isn't taking much damage despite my nice attack stat. I use Screech, and then I knock it out. Cloister's next. I use Rock Slide. It misses, because of course it does, it's a rock move. And then Cloister uses Clamp. But it misses as well. Ah, Onyx survives another day. Rock Slide connects, does half damage, and then Aurora Beam strikes. But Onyx hangs on with 10 hit points. Okay, Rock Slide, please. Ugh, okay, it misses. Because it's a rock move. I try again right away, anything's possible with a few less misses, right? Well, apparently not, because Onyx misses its first rock slide again and then just faints to Aurora Beam. Okay, so, no more of this. <laughs> I'm just gonna go train again. The Fighting Dojo is a great place to get attack stat experience anyways. I know Onyx is weak to their fighting moves, but my 150 plus defense stat has something to say about that. With them out of the way, I head to Koga's Gym. Perhaps the fact that I've leveled up a bit and have rock slide will mean that I can do good damage to his bugs. Ah, uh, conveniently I get poisoned on the juggler right before him, uh, so there's no risk of sleep anymore. Koga opens with Venonat. Because I have no idea what type his Pokemon are, I use Dig on the first turn. Uh, luckily for me, it one-shots the Venonat. However, my Rock Slide doesn't get the same luck against the second one. It does a lot of damage with Psychic, lowering my already atrocious special in the process. Onyx starts to learn Harden, I replace Screech, access to the badge boost is just going to be like really important. I set up once, and then I get taken down to 8 hit points. Please, let the one badge boost be enough to knock the Venonat out. But it isn't, so that must be it. Well, it isn't, because Venonat gets a Gen 1 miss with Psychic. Instead, I just barely survive poison and get one more turn. Venomoth is last. This grass water type is terrifying for Onyx. Ah, especially because it's fast. I tried the fight one more time, but it doesn't go any better. Harden is just a few experience points away, so I face one of the other trainers in his gym, level up, and then I can use it against Koga from the start of the fight. I use two Hardens, Venonat gets a crit with Psychic, and Onyx ends up at 16 hit points before it starts to attack. For some reason, I am again selecting Dig. I do know that Rock Slide will do more damage, but I think that I'm just forever incapable of selecting the consistent move in this fight. And this time I pay for my mistakes because the extra time underground causes Onyx to faint. At this point, I was getting really tired of this fight, so I used 6 of my rare candies bringing Onyx to level 47. Still, leveling up doesn't solve the problem of using Dig against the Venonats. Onyx goes down one more time. However, on the next fight I finally figure it out and we can all rejoice because I start to let the rocks slide. The Venonats drop like flies. Well gnats, and then the Venomoth uses Psychic. Onyx hangs on and finishes the fight. It's time for the next attempt against Rival Fival. This is the fifth one, otherwise known as uh, Rival Fival 5. This time I try to set up Harden against Sandslash, but the issue with this strategy is that Sand Attack ruins my accuracy. I miss against Cloyster, while it sets up Withdraw, I finally connect, do a lot of damage, Cloyster uses Aurora Beam, I survive, and Rock Slide doesn't do hardly anything the next turn, and then Clamp finishes Onyx off. While I continue to bash my head into this wall, let's contemplate what my options are. I could train more in Sylph and level up so that this fight is consistent, or surf across the sea and face Blaine. I think the latter is obviously the best choice. It provides more levels, a boost to Onyx's special if I get the badge, and it also lets me cool my rage off. I was really frustrated with this fight. But then this happens. I get 6 Hardens set up, my Onyx is like far beyond rock solid now, and it only gets a little bit dirty suffering only one sand attack before knocking Sandslash out. Rock Slide, in a miracle, connects with Cloyster and one-shots it. Okay, that's good. Magneton is next. I just need Dig to connect, but it doesn't. However, the Magnets try to use Thundershock, so I knock them out with my second Dig. Luckily for me, Onyx is fast. Please hit the Kadabra. I do, and all that's left is Flareon. Dig one-shots it. The Giovanni fight is easy, and with that I'm moving on to Blaine. Before I take him on, I complete the mansion and grab some extra vitamins. What I was worried about for Blaine is that his Pokemon have good special stats, and as we know, Onyx does not. However, my saving graces are the fact that Onyx resists fire moves, has decent speed, and has super effective damage. So let's try this. Blaine starts with Ninetales. Onyx outspeeds, uses Dig, and takes the fire type out. Next is Rapidash, and it's rapid, so it moves first and uses Growl. However, it fails and Onyx knocks it out too. Arcanine is last. Rock Slide does over half damage, and then next turn I finish it off with Dig. 
With Blaine out of the way and Onyx at level 50, I think that it's finally time to face Erica. Like, this has got to be easy now, right? I use Body Slam, turn 1 against Tangela, hoping to get Paralysis, because I know I can't knock it out. It does half, no Paralysis, and then Erica uses Mega Drain. It does half damage to Onyx and heals Tangela in the process. Oh no. <laughs> I try Rock Slide, hoping that Stab will give me what I need to knock the Vine Monster out, but it isn't. So yeah, Onyx at level 50? Lost to Erica. The next fight is luckier for me. Tangela doesn't use Mega Drain and instead uses Vine Whip. Onyx survives with nice health and knocks it out. After that, it's an easy sweep. Onyx outspeeds both the Weeping Bell and the Gloom, and they take neutral damage from Dig. Now, you might think that Sabrina is going to be very challenging because her Pokemon are terrifying special attackers, but that really isn't the case. Onyx has 110 speed going into this fight, and with only one use of Harden that triggers the badge boost glitch, it's now going to outspeed all of her Pokemon. Well, unless it levels up after the Kadabra. Alakazam uses Recover, Onyx goes underground, Dig takes it into red, Alakazam uses Psy Wave, misses, okay, and then Onyx takes the win. It's time for Giovanni. If this was red and blue, Onyx would easily defeat him, but all of his Pokemon except for Persian know Earthquake in yellow. I hope my ridiculous defense can carry me. Body Slam first turn, and I get Paralysis, so that was a nice gamble. That makes Doug Trio free. Persian is next. It gets a bit annoying with double team, but Onyx can tank its normal type attacks. Nido Queen is next. I use Harden to boost my attack a little bit and my defense a lot, and then I knock it out. Onyx outspeeds the following Nido King, so it moves first, uses Dig, does a lot of damage, and then Giovanni uses his signature guard spec, so I knock out the Nido King for free. Ride on is last. I do half damage with Dig, it uses Earthquake, and Onyx faints. In the next fight, I also get Paralysis on the Doug Trio again. That's really nice. Persian is a little bit faster this time, and by the way, I'm not using Dig here because that gives it time to set up double team. Even Earthquake wouldn't be as good. I'm just spamming Body Slam because it's a few less turns than Dig, and it also has the chance for Paralysis. On Nido Queen, Giovanni grants me some extra time to use Harden. After that, I can knock both the Nidos out in a single hit each. Okay, ride on. Play nice this time. I go for Dig, it does half. Ride on retaliates with Earthquake, it does so much damage. Onyx survives with 25 hit points, uses Dig, and finishes the fight. Now, the final rival is next. Onyx actually matches up really well against his entire team because Sandslash provides the perfect place to set up Harden. It can't do anything to me right here because it doesn't know Earthquake yet, so I'm able to take the victory here. But the trainer that I'm most unsure about is next. How is Onyx going to deal with Lorelei? I know Rock Slide is super effective against Ice types, but Cloyster has 180 defense, and it knows Clamp. I arrive at her at level 54 with 3 rare candies remaining. Let's see how it goes. Dugong is first. I use Body Slam to damage it so it will go to sleep on the second turn. I end up paralyzing it, which could be bad if it fails to move on the turn it has an 80% chance to use Rest on. Next, it uses Aurora Beam and takes Onyx all the way down to 13 hit points. I've got three turns to set up Harden before it attacks again. Please let this be enough. I use Rock Slide, it does so much to Dugong, but not quite enough. Lorelei uses a Super Potion retroactively instead of attacking, and that lets Onyx knock the Dugong out. But because of how little damage I'm doing, I don't stand a chance against the Cloister that's next. Unless I get incredible luck, there's just no way I'm going to defeat her. Earlier on, I used a lot of my rare candies against Koga. I really should have just trained. Unfortunately for me, I've got to do things the slow way in this playthrough. I train against so many of the trainers that I usually skip in Kanto, and at level 61, I'm ready to try Lorelei again. I use Body Slam, it paralyzes the Dugong, but it still moves and uses Bubble Beam for 4 times damage. Despite all my training, my Onyx still falls in a single hit. So, I decided to do this fight again. I forgot to use my rare candies, so I reset one additional time, and two levels higher, Bubble Beam still one-shots Onyx. By going into this fight a few more times, I'm sure you can tell that I just really didn't want to train anymore. What I was thinking is that if I can just make it past Lorelei with luck, then I'll be able to sweep the rest of the league relatively easily because I'm decently overleveled. However, this isn't the case, it's just not going to work at this level. I need to train more. I'll give you a moment right now to guess what level you think Onyx is going to need. 65? 69? Maybe 70? Well, while you contemplate it, watch Onyx lose while training against trainers in Victory Road. Yeah, even the training is painful with this thing. Uh, by the way, I knocked Moltres out while I was in here. Uh, that feels pretty good, I guess. So, do you have your guess in mind? Put it in the comments. At level 66, I give Lorelei a shot again, and Dugong bubble beams all over Onyx again, knocking it out. 
I'm still not in triple digits special before the badge boost. Remember, these stats that are displaying don't include the additional 12.5%. I use three rare candies and come back at a nice level, and then it happens again. I'm getting really tired of how bad Onyx is. Still, there's one rare candy on the map, so I take some time to grab it in the power plant. As I go, I continue to train against optional trainers along the way. I knock out Zapdos. Ah, no way I'm facing the Articuno though, just nope. At this point, I've faced nearly every trainer that's easily accessible in Kanto, so now it's time to grind in Victory Road. At level 68, I use all four of my rare candies, taking Onyx to level 72. I cross my fingers and pray that this is enough. At this level, Onyx outspeeds Dugong, hits with Rock Slide, and one-shots it. Okay, that feels so good. And now it's time for the Duel of the Ages. My Rock Heart Snake uses Rock Slide to pound the Cloister, taking it into Orange Health. And then Cloister uses Clamp, finishing me off. It's time for my 10th fight against Lorelei. If I can only set up against Dugong, then maybe I can one-shot Cloister because it uses Clamp. And then Dugong gets a critical hit with Aurora Beam and knocks Onyx out. Ah. <sighs> And then it knocks me out with Bubble Beam. So I just decided not to try and set up on the Dugong. I'll just knock it out with Rock Slide and figure out the Cloister after. And then Onyx Speed pays off, giving me a critical hit with Rock Slide, knocking it out in a single hit. Slowbro is next and it knows Surf and Withdraw. Two water moves, and it's going to choose between one of them. Lorelei has AI Modification 2 as well, meaning that on the second turn, her Pokemon in battle will always use a stat boosting move if possible. This is, of course, with the exception of Dugong that has like weird AI, so it only uses rest 80% of the time on turn 2. Jinx is next, but Onyx is faster and stronger. Please, just let Rock Slide 1 hit the Lapras. I was so scared as his health drained. Come on. Yes! <gasps> Onyx has done it. Okay, here's a question for everyone. What's better than two Onyxes? One Onyx. Now, I regularly skip narrating Agatha when I have Earthquake on my moveset because it's so good against her. Uh, so good, I even try to use it against the Golbat. Uh, still, Onyx outspeeds all of her Pokemon and one-shots every single one of them. This was an easy fight. Lance is last. I'm a bit scared because of Gyarados' Hydro Pump. I use Rock Slide, hoping for the one hit. I don't get it. Brace myself for Hydro Pump. But Lance uses a Hyper Potion. I get one more turn, use Rock Slide, and Gyarados faints. The Dragoner that follows faints in a single hit. It only has electric and normal moves anyway, so it couldn't do anything. The second Dragonair knows its worth. It survives, gets a Hyper Potion, survives again, and then hits my snake with its least favorite move, Bubble Beam. But the Dragon doesn't have Stab, so I survive. Aerodactyl's next. Here, I take time to set up because this thing only has flying and normal moves, which I resist. I want to be fully prepared for the following Dragonite. Rock Slide takes care of Aerodactyl, Dragonite comes out, I move first, and I knock it out. At long last, Onyx has reached the champion. Now, in the previous fight against the rival, his Sandslash was the perfect place to set up. But here this isn't the case. Now it knows Earthquake, and it likes to get crits. Still, Harden boosts my defense, allowing me to survive Sandslash's attacks, and it also sets up the badge boost, so I want to get as many off as possible. After only two, I think I need to start attacking. Body Slam doesn't do much, I try Earthquake instead, but Sandslash hangs on. If only I had used two Earthquakes, I would have avoided one turn of damage. Alakazam is next. I outspeed, and Earthquake gets it done. Executor should be very scary, but the only grass move that it knows is Leech Seed, so the champion's just going to spam it over and over. Magneton after that is an easy Oko with Earthquake, and now it's time for Cloister again. I use Rock Slide, Cloister survives, and uses Clamp. My heart sunk. I've made it this far, but I might very well be walled by the final fight in the game. Oh, guess not! Clamp misses, Onyx attacks, and the water type is no more. I easily outspeed and knock out Flareon. Onyx clocks in with a time of 1 hour, 54 minutes, and 20 seconds at level 75, with 35 resets and a game time of 6 hours and 31 minutes. But how lucky was all of this? I need to go back and test a lot of these fights. To be as thorough as possible, I decided to test all the major fights that I felt might not be consistent for Onyx. First is Brock. I originally fought him at level 10. To test, I fought him 10 times, and to my surprise, my Onyx actually won every single time. I expected that in one of the fights, his Onyx would get enough binds off and defeat me, but it didn't happen, so I'm confident coming back to this fight at level 10 in the future. Now, Misty's a big question mark because she has good AI and 4 times damage with water moves. To make this completely consistent, I'd need to outspeed and one-shot both of her Pokemon. Or I'd need to be at a level where I can regularly tank Stormy's Bubble Beam in order to get a second hit in. That seems unlikely though in a realistic scenario. 
Needless to say, level 28 isn't high enough to achieve this. Level 30 isn't either, or 35. Now, level 35 is so overleveled for this point in a playthrough. It would just be better to try and make it through at level 28 like I did in the first playthrough. But I was curious how many times out of 10 I would win at this level. And the answer is 8 out of 10 times. I tested this a bit more, and at level 41, I can finally survive bubble beams and knock Starmie out with regularity. Koga's next. Because the Sylph rival is awful, and so is Erica, my question here is if I use Rock Slide at a lower level, can I proceed faster through this fight? Not like that even matters though, because all the levels I'm going to need for Lorelei in the end. Onyx isn't consistent enough at level 43. At level 45, I can win with decent regularity, but the problem here is that Venomoth isn't always a one hit. Turns out that Onyx needs to be at least level 55 with 94 attack to guarantee the knockout. This fight actually might make sense to do in the range of level 50 to 55 in preparation for the late game. I did test Blaine, uh, just in case, but I won all 10 fights against him starting at level 49. He's completely easy. With a level 50 Onyx, Erica isn't completely consistent. I won 9 out of 10 fights. I could probably do Sabrina first for like one more level, but a 90% chance is good enough for Erica. If she's going to win, it's the Tangle that's going to knock me out anyways, and that means I won't have to invest a lot of time in the fights that end up as failures. Sabrina's next, and she can win. At level 55, Onyx still doesn't naturally outspeed the Alakazam. That forces either one turn of setup on the Abra, or potentially two turns of damage from Alakazam. Onyx can tank one Psychic now, but not two. So I set up Harden on Abra to boost speed. Onyx ends up winning 9 out of 10 fights against Sabrina with this strategy. The last gym leader is Giovanni, and the issue at level 56 is that Nidoqueen does too much damage to Onyx with Double Kick, and even more with Earthquake. There isn't a great opportunity to get set up, like I could on Persian, but then it gets so many double teams off, I really hate that idea. And I can't one-shot most of Giovanni's Pokemon. However, at level 60, I can tank hits just well enough to get through the fight with decent consistency. I think aiming for level 60 at Giovanni is a good plan. It synergizes nicely with the rest of the run as well. This puts Onyx in the position to be level 72 for Lorelei after I use my rare candies. This is, after all, the level that I faced her and won in my original playthrough. But that's the real question. Is level 72 high enough for Onyx to consistently defeat Lorelei? Well, uh, in the early 70s, uh... Victory is only possible if Onyx gets lucky. In the late 70s, it's still struggling, and this is mostly because of Cloyster and Slowbro. Dugong isn't an issue because it can be easily one hit with Rock Slide, but the two defensive tanks that follow it can't be. That gives them at least two turns to hit Onyx with Clamp, Ice Beam, or Surf. Now, four times damage from Slowbro's Stab Surf is probably always going to one hit Onyx. So I figured that the most pragmatic approach would be to gamble on Slowbro, but consistently knock out Cloyster. However, it turns out even this isn't pragmatic, because I need to be level 88 to do this. So instead of grinding that high, what are the chances of getting through this fight at around level 72, so that I can take on Giovanni at level 60? So here are those fights for you. In the first one, Clamp one-shots me with a critical hit. Now, yes, a single hit from Clamp one-shot the Onyx. That's one loss. I survive Cloyster because it misses Clamp and then Slowbro uses Surf. Okay, two losses. Uh, Cloyster Oko's Onyx with Clamp. Now, that's three. I miss Rock Slide against Dugong and Bubble Beam knocks Onyx out. Four. Clamp connects. Onyx survives two hits and gets taken down by the third. So, five. I miss Rock Slide. Dugong uses Bubble Beam and Onyx survives with one hit point. I'm just counting this one as a moral victory. It feels really good. Uh, despite the fact, though, Cloyster still clamps Onyx into oblivion on the next turn. Cloyster then uses Ice Beam. Onyx survives, knocks it out, but then Slowbro uses Surf. Okay, so that's seven losses. This repeats again. I survive the Ice Beam, but I miss Rock Slide and lose anyways. On my ninth fight, I get clamped into oblivion. And at this point, I started to realize that maybe I was just going to lose all ten fights. Uh, so just how lucky was my playthrough victory? On the 10th fight, I survive Ice Beam with nice health. Slowbro comes out, I use Body Slam, paralyze it, that's great, and then I knock it out over the next two turns. From there, Jinx is a one-shot, and finally Lapras survives my Rock Slide. <sighs> okay, that's it. But the Ice Monster misses Hydro Pump, and Onyx finishes it off. Okay, so Lance is the next fight that was particularly tricky. The solution here though is easy. I just need to be able to one-shot the Gyarados with Rock Slide. If I can do that, then Lance is a free win. My Onyx can get this done at level 75 with 157 attack. Remember, after the badge boost, this is 176 attack. When testing the champion, I had a realization. The only reason Onyx struggles in this fight is because it lacks recovery. With recovery, full setup is possible against the Sand Slash. I add rest to my moveset to correct this deficiency, and with this move I'm able to win 7 out of 10 times. 
Now the barrier is no longer cloister because the setup allows me to one-shot it. Instead, the thing that's really messing with me is the fact that Sandslash gets critical hits. Because the champion has good AI, he's always going to be using Earthquake, and when it crits, it crits hard. So you might think that I'm done now, but uh, I'm not. <laughs> I really wanted to get a better time with Onyx. Uh, nearly two hours is far too long, especially when I could have saved my rare candies for longer. I just think this is a major mistake and I need to try it again. So here we go, the abridged version of Onyx playthrough number two. I now know that Brock is consistent at level 10, so I just go into this fight with that being the plan and I easily take him out. Now in Mount Moon, I can make a big optimization here, and that's to train more extensively. Onyx is great against the majority of these Pokemon anyway, because it's a rock type. This extra training gives me rock throw earlier, making Nugget Bridge easier and faster. Then I go to the SSN, grab Rest and Body Slam, and then I make it back to Misty. I'm level 28 again, but this time I save two rare candies. Okay, Misty, please don't mess me up. I really don't want to do a third Onyx playthrough. Star use first, Dig one shots it, and then it's Star Me time. I move first, use Dig, take it to the orange, and then Star Me uses Water Gun. But Onyx miraculously survives with one hit point and finishes the fight. That's a first fight victory. All right, great. And uh, then I say bye bye to Surge. I make an unfortunate setup mistake against the Pokemaniac in Rock Tunnel, and I actually pay for it because of confusion. And that's my first reset. Okay, I've reached the mid game, and now it's time to train. I want decent consistency for all remaining leaders, and I'm aiming for level 60 at Giovanni, as I previously mentioned. I grab an extra rare candy in the Rocket Hideout. This one only takes about 40 seconds to grab, so it's not really that out of the way if you have to be level 72. Then I train in Pokemon Tower, Dig is great here, Cycling Road, once again, Dig is great, and then I finish off with training in Sylph. But this isn't enough, my Onyx is greedy and it still needs more experience. I train in the Dojo, in Koga's Gym, and east of Fuchsia City. I'm level 53 by the time I'm actually facing Fival. Because I'm a higher level, I only set up once against the Sand Slash. I want to minimize the number of turns that it can use Sand Attack. After that, I knock it out with two turns of Dig cloister time, but at this level Rock Slide is an Oko and from there his team is simple. Next I take on Sabrina. At my level I don't need a single turn of setup on the Abra. I don't knock the Kadabra out and unfortunately the Alakazam is the same story, but Onyx survives and takes the win. Because of this extra training, Koga is a cakewalk, 4 Rock Slides and 4 KOs, even against the Steel type Venomoth. Blaine, ah uh, yeah, Onyx isn't losing any sleep over him. I train for the last time in Giovanni's gym. I arrive at him at level 59, one level lower than my target of 60, and this is because I made an adjustment during my plan. Originally, I didn't intend to grab the rare candy in the hideout, but since I took it, I figured that I could cut some training and go a little bit faster as a result. Strangely enough, Giovanni's actually a big pushover in this fight and I win on my first attempt. In Victory Road, I complete Onyx's spree of trainer battles and use 10 rare candies on it. Now, this entire run could fall apart here. Lorelei is pure luck. Slowbro gets Onyx fight one, then it happens again, then Cloyster clamps, Slowbro surfs three times in a row, yeah, three times in a row, Cloyster clamps again, Slowbro surfs, Cloyster ice beams, I miss Dugong, survive at one hit point, emotional victory, that feels good, but then I lose to ice beam anyways. So that's 10 losses against her. And then on my 11th fight, Dugong lowers Onyx's speed with bubble beam, and so there's no chance now. This is looking really bad, but one major win here is that Cloyster can get healed with super potions, and that's the way that I make it to Slowbro. And then I paralyze it. It sets up withdraw, I get a critical hit with Earthquake, and knock it out. Jinx is a one hit, and all that's left is Lapras. But it can survive. Onyx makes the rocks slide, gets a critical hit, and with that, I've done it. Ah, uh, hey hiker. Agatha, whatever. Lance is next. I use my final rare candy here. What I realized is that I can set up on the second Dragonair after one hitting the Gyarados. It only knows Thunderbolt, Thunder Wave, Slam, and Hyper Beam, the last of which makes setting up very quick work. Badge boosts on my side, I sweep through his team and arrive at Dragonite. Please, Rock Slide, don't miss. It doesn't, and Onyx is off to the champion for the second time in one day. I got a bit too excited here and forgot to teach Onyx rest for the first fight. This leads to a defeat when Leech Seed damage knocks me out after I failed to KO Cloyster. However, this loss gave me an idea. What if I don't fully set up on the Sand Slash? I lost my badge boost to a level up after all. Instead, I can use Harden once and then two hit the Sand Slash. Alakazam is still a one hit. Executor now takes three hits, so that's a little annoying, but it's only gonna spam Leech Seed over and over and over again. I level up and then it's time for Magneton. And setup here is essentially free. I've avoided Sand Slash's annoying crits with this alteration. I just need to hope that 5 turns of setup are all I need for the Cloister. But it doesn't matter, I get a critical hit and knock it out. 
Flareon goes down, and Onyx clocks in with a time of 1 hour, 34 minutes, and 15 seconds, at level 76 with 14 resets, and a game time of 5 hours and 52 minutes. Now, how does Onyx compare with all the other Pokemon that I've done playthroughs with? Well, it's 1 minute and 23 seconds slower than Paris's second playthrough. Please let that sink in. Onyx is slower than the first stage Pokemon with 3 4 times weaknesses and 25 base speed. It's also slower than Pidgeot's first attempt, Rattata, Wigglytuff's first attempt, Ghastly's first attempt, and another cool serpent, Dragonair. It did manage a better time than Mankey, but Mankey didn't get a second attempt. I'm pretty confident that it would get a better time if I'd done another one. In terms of resets, it has more than the Pokemon who are closely timed with it. Paris had 7 on its second attempt, and Pidgeot and Furo had 10 and 12 respectively on their first attempts, while Onyx had 14 on its second attempt, and 35 on its first. Now, for game time, I've only started recording this metric recently, so keep that in mind. At 5 hours and 52 minutes, it's only faster than a handful of Pokemon. Uh, not very good Pokemon at that, like Pikachu, Magnemite, and Zubat. Um, I don't have a time for Tangela, but it's obviously faster than Tangela. Tangela is definitely Bruno tier. So considering all those metrics, I think this rock hard snake deserves a spot in the D tier, just behind Butterfree and Beedrill. Uh, I did those playthroughs a while ago, uh, they would both perform much better now. So today I get to check another Pokemon off my challenge decks. I'm uh, gonna finish all of these, I, I swear. If you want to support me on this journey to play yellow with every single Pokemon in the game, uh, consider checking out my Patreon, the link is in the description. There's an exclusive Discord server and occasionally some bonus content. Thanks so much for everyone who already does support me, you're the reason that I'm able to do this. Like, subscribe, ring the chime echo, and comment because I gotta read them all. If you've made it this far, you're incredible. It's bloopers time. In Viridian City, I stopped by the Mart and... Ugh, Mart. What was that? In Viridian City, I stopped by the Mart and stalk... Ah. I'm at four hit points. His Onyx goes for bind. Misses. My tackle does... Ah. This sentence is hard. It's too long. Too long sentence. Need, like, four words. Between... Oh, I just bumped the desk. Made noises. Ah. <laughs> I do choose to fight... Oh, I bumped the desk again. I'm doing like my mouth exercises. Went to a vocal coach. And they're like, do this mouth exercise. I basically just stick out my tongue for a long time. And it looks really silly. Apparently, humans aren't supposed to talk endlessly, like for like an hour at this level of speed. <laughs> I was like, I showed them my video, and like the whole time I'm like, oh, I talk so slow, it's the worst. And then like the vocal coach is like, your video is like, wow, you just talk really fast. Oh no. <laughs> Oops. This guy's claim to fame is that he's useful to trigger the mo 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 Oh my, I can't say it. Mew glitch. <laughs> I was trying. <laughs> ah. Or Starmie takes almost no damage and knocks wa- Ah. Knocks wa- I was gonna say Wanix. Ah. Onyx uses X defend. Oh, oops. Nope. <laughs> not that. <laughs> Onyx does not use X defend. I fail to, and that lets- Ah. Uh, let's. Let's. Come on. I can do that. Let's go. I fail to, and that lets the next Oddish take Onyx down. Oh, there's a lot of O's in this sentence. Oddish take Onyx into orange health. That's a lot. I fail to, and that lets the next. Ah, I fail to, and that lets Oddish take Onyx into the orange health. Uh, into the orange. Ah, I head south to the Safari. Uh, sa safari. I head south to. Oh my gosh, got a lisp there. No, I could try Erica or Koga. Ah, Erica does not seem like a good auction. Auction. Ah, yes, we're selling Erica. <laughs> 